Good morning, Will and Dee, actually, and it's lovely to be with you for another assembly. It's Reverend Sarah, and it's great to be with you today. I hope that you're having a good week. I hope that you're all keeping well. I think from something I saw on Facebook that some of you, at least, have had a trip out this week. You've been on a school trip. That must have been so lovely to be out together, and I hope that you really enjoyed that, and hopefully I'll get to hear a little bit more about that um, at some point soon. Well, we've been thinking about our Easter stories for lots and lots and lots of weeks now. We thought about our Holy Week stories, then we thought about the weekend of Good Friday and when Jesus went to the cross, and that amazing Easter Sunday morning when Jesus rose again. And then we've been thinking about those stories after Easter, when Jesus appeared to his disciples. And we thought about how Jesus was on a road walking and talking with two of his friends. We thought about when Jesus appeared in a room and showed them his hands and his side to show them the nails that had been banged into his hands and his side. And then we thought about that story when Jesus was on the shore and those fishermen were out fishing and they caught nothing all night. But the next day uh, when Jesus was there, he said, put your nets over the other side. And they did that and they caught loads and loads of things, loads of fish. And then we thought about the story of Jesus and Peter, about Jesus telling Peter to feed Jesus' sheep, his lambs, to take care of them. And we thought a little bit about Jesus being the good shepherd and what that means. Well, in some ways, we're coming to the end of our Easter stories now, but in some ways we're not. I guess I know that's a little bit confusing. But actually, for Christians, we need to remember our Easter stories all year round. And we celebrate lots of different things throughout the Christian year. You've got your lovely calendar in the hall that I can't see at the moment, but you can see it when you have your lunches. And lots of different things happen. But our Easter stories are things that live with Christians all year round. Because remember that Jesus died for us. We remember this cross. And remember that heart at the centre of this cross, that Jesus died for us because he loves us so much. And that's something that we never forget as Christians, that Jesus loves us so much. And we also never forget the amazing Easter morning story of when Jesus rose again. And how amazing that is, because people do not rise from the dead, but Jesus did. So they are things that live with Christians all year. And you might find Christians wearing um, cross necklaces or other things, the jewellery, uh, things that have a cross on them to remind them of how important Easter is. So Easter is very, very central to the Christian story. And the story of Easter kind of runs through many of the other stories. So I said we're kind of at the end of our Easter stories. That is because today is a, another day. It's a very special day in the Christian year as well. And it's what I think I've spoken to you about before as being Christmas backwards. Now that's a little bit strange, isn't it? But I'll explain what I mean with that. So we've been talking about Easter for weeks and weeks and weeks. So let's go back and think about Christmas just very briefly. And I have my beautiful little scene there. I'm just hopefully you can see that. With Joseph, with Mary and with the baby Jesus. And we remember this story again, it's a story that stays with Christians all year round. But we remember at, at Christmas, nearly got my days wrong then, we remember at Christmas that something very special happens. That God sent his son Jesus into the world for us because God loved us so much. And we remember through our Christmas story that Jesus lived on earth with us. He knew what it was like to be human. God is not a God who is so far removed and he doesn't know what people are feeling. But Jesus came to earth. He walked on earth. We know in the Bible that Jesus cried. We know he went to weddings and did lots of the things that we do. But we remember that Jesus came to earth for us. So if I'm talking about Christmas in reverse, what do you think happened on what we celebrate today on what is called Ascension? Well, let's think about the word. What does the word ascend mean? It means to go up. So you might think about I'm ascending a staircase. Or you might think about, yeah, ascending a mountain if you're walking up a mountain. So today we are thinking about Jesus going up. So we remember at Christmas that he came down to earth 
And at Ascension, which is actually today, we're marking it on the right day, we remember that Jesus went back up to heaven again. Now, it's a slightly confusing story because this doesn't happen to people, uh, but much happens to Jesus and much we hear about Jesus only happens to Jesus because Jesus is completely unique. There is only one Jesus, definitely. Now, Jesus had been preparing his friends and his disciples for such a long time that this is going to happen. We can remember that he was with them for about three years, teaching them, showing them what he wanted them to do, trying to get them ready for this time when he knew that everything at the cross would happen, everything about him rising again and coming and showing himself to them in different ways would happen. But he knew that he wouldn't be on the earth forever. So Ascension is the time when Jesus returned to be with his Father God. Now I wonder if you can think how this might happen. We've talked about our Christmas story. And that is my big, wonderful angel. I love this angel hugely. I'm going to put it down straight now. It's still showing a little bit of the side of the video. But let's think, so that in our Christmas story, we have angels, don't we? The angel appears to Mary and to Joseph and to the shepherds. And there's an angel singing, glory to God in the highest, a heavenly host of angels, lots and lots and lots of angels. We also know that when those first disciples and friends went to Jesus' tomb on that first Easter morning, that there were angels there. Jesus wasn't there initially, but there were angels there. And in our story today, there are angels as well. So Jesus had come back and had been with his disciples for a short time, for a period of weeks. It wasn't months or years, it was a period of a few weeks. And he'd come back and shown them that, yes, he was risen. He showed them his hands again. And he did lots of miracles again, like those fish, those amazing fish. And he got his disciples ready for what was going to happen when he spoke to Peter about feeding his sheep, looking after his people. And so Jesus was preparing his first disciples to carry on the work that he had done when he had been alive. And so the time comes and they go to a mountain together. And the Bible tells that Jesus was literally lifted up. We might think about people who levitate who were a little bit off the ground, but Jesus was literally lifted up and he went into the cloud. That is what the Bible tells us. And the disciples were below watching all of this. I wonder what they were thinking again. My goodness, they have seen so much and been part of so much. What do you think they were thinking today? Um, they must have been so confused, I think. But what we know in this story is that there were angels there. There were two angels there. And the angels said to those disciples, those friends of Jesus, why are you standing there and watching them? Jesus told you that this was going to happen. So go back and do what he commanded you to do. So angels appear in quite a lot of our stories. Another common theme in our story is Mary, Jesus' mother, because she was obviously there when Jesus was born. She had to be. She was there at the cross. We know that she was there when Jesus died on the cross. And we also know that she was one of those women on the first day that saw that Jesus was alive again. And we're told in our story today that Mary was also there at this point. And so these disciples have come to this mountain. They've seen Jesus go up. He's ascended. It's called the Ascension. And so what do you think they do then? Well, the angel has told them to go home to go back to Jerusalem and wait there, which is what Jesus had told them to do. And so they set off to do that. But we thought about some of those times after Jesus appeared to disciples on Easter Day and those other occasions. And we've imagined those disciples skipping back, jumping and running and going to tell all the other friends of Jesus that they have seen him, he is alive. But I wonder whether they feel exactly the same today. I imagine they might feel a little bit sadder. They might feel a little bit confused and they might have lots of questions. So in my mind, and the Bible does not tell us this, I imagine they had a really slow walk back to Jerusalem. Maybe they had some conversations, but I imagine they were quite quiet because they were thinking about what was going on. They were trying again to make sense of it because we really like to make sense of things that don't always make sense. 
And when they got to Jerusalem, we know that they went back to the upper room that they'd been staying in. And the Bible tells us that at that point, just get my hands, they devoted themselves to prayer. And I use these beautiful hands to pray with sometimes they're so beautiful and soft. And they spent their time there praying. What do you think their prayers were? I wonder. Maybe you can think a bit more about what their prayers might have been. But do you know this action of being in that room together and praying and we're told that the disciples devoted themselves to praying. It wasn't just a, oh, I'll do it for like 20 minutes. They devoted themselves each and every day to pray together. And so I imagine this took up a lot of time, a lot of their day as they prayed together because they knew how important prayer was. Now today we start something very special in the church. We start a period of time called Thy Kingdom Come. Now you might recognise the line Thy Kingdom Come because it comes from the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that we say fairly often, that Our Father who art in heaven prayer. And Thy Kingdom Come is a prayer that our Archbishop, so in the Church of England we have bishops and our bishop is Bishop Stephen and Bishop Dagmar and then we have our Archbishops who are Bishop Justin um, and now Bishop Stephen. Um, it, it's changed recently. So we have Archbishops and our Archbishops ask us this time every year to pray between Ascension, which is today, and Pentecost, which is a week on Sunday. Um, it's the 31st, I think, uh, just to keep my calendar for clarification of that. No, it's the 30th of May. So we're asked to pray particularly for 10 days, thinking about what these disciples did and how they devoted themselves to prayer. And we can be praying for lots of different things because we believe as Christians that prayer changes things, that God hears our prayer and that he changes things. Now, Jesus, before he had ascended on the ascension and went back up into heaven, he told his disciples to go and make other disciples, to tell other people about him and to bring them to know him. And we'll hear a bit more about that next week in our next story. So the disciples had much to pray about because they were told as well to go to the ends of the earth, which meant to cover everywhere. And all the Gospels, the four Gospels, the Matthew, Mark, Luke and John tell us the stories about Jesus. But the book after that is Acts. And the Acts tell us about how the first Christians came about, about how they lived and worked and how they travelled to go and spread the news of Jesus to everybody. So there is always much to talk about in the Bible and to tell you about. And I get really excited because these are really exciting stories. So in this time, we are invited to pray. And the Archbishop suggests that we pray for five people, perhaps five friends that you, maybe you're worried about them. Maybe there's something that you want to pray for, particularly for them. But that we pray for five people to come to know Jesus because that's one of the best prayers we can pray because Jesus does amazing things but you might also want to pray for things going on around the world we hear a lot in our news about India sometimes in our news we don't hear stories of places where things are happening because that's kind of old news the newspapers have moved on to something that's a bigger story at the time so maybe we want to pray for a place that's not in the news headlines at the moment Maybe you've got a particular person or situation you want to pray for. Maybe you want to pray for your school. So let's think about praying together in this time, this time of thy kingdom come. So we're going to have a ton of quiet reflection. I'm not going to pray out loud today. I'm going to let you pray those prayers for yourself in your head. And they can be about anything. They don't need to be fancy language. Just pray for something that you feel really strongly about today. And just ask God to help you with that or to help that person. And then at the end, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer. And you can join in with that if you would if you would like to. So let's take a few moments of reflection and then you can pray when you want. And then I will finish with the Lord's Prayer.
Well, I prayed for five of my friends that I would love to come to know Jesus. And I wonder what you prayed for. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Well, maybe you want to continue those prayers this week and pray for those five people or for whatever situation you prayed for. Because the Bible tells us to, to keep praying. It tells that prayer is really important. And so maybe if things are difficult, you want to pray for those things. Look after yourselves. I hope you have a great rest of your week at school, a really good weekend, and I look forward to being with you again next week. Take care, William D. Axley. Bye. <laughs>